Small trials of ketamine for treatment-resistant depression have suggested it might have an effect. Dr. James Murrow did a proof-of-concept trial in 73 patients and found a rapid antidepressant effect from ketamine. We know that while many patients do respond to current treatments for depression, there's a, sub a substantial minority of patients that are refractory, unfortunately, even to multiple types of medications or psychosocial interventions. And this, this is a, a cartoon of the glutamate synapse. In short, we're very interested in the glutamate system and the drug that we're talking about today. Ketamine, which is an anesthetic agent, is a, a binds to an aspect of the glutamate system, which is the NMDA receptor and modulates its function. Now this receptor, we don't have time to get into it, but it, it modulates both the short-term excitatory effects of cells and also long-term uh, plasticity. Prior studies have shown that a single injection of ketamine could have rapid antidepressant effects, but there are certain methodological limitations, and this study set out to try and have a more definitive test of that hypothesis, whether a single injection of a low dose of ketamine could be rapidly antidepressant. And we compared it to what we called an active comparator, another anesthetic agent, in this case, midazolam. Patients with treatment-resistant depression were randomized to ketamine or midazolam, which is a water-soluble benzodiazepine anesthetic, as something that could mimic some anesthetic effects but should be devoid of intrinsic antidepressant effects. And the primary outcome was 24 hours after a single injection. And these are the data. What you see there is the uh, mattress depression score, where higher is more depressed. And you can see the change in depression scores the, on the x-axis there at day one. That was the primary outcome what the depression level was one day after in the ketamine in blue compared to the control condition in red. And what you can see is a significant separation at the primary outcome such that patients had significantly increased uh, responses to um, ketamine compared to the control. And that was maintained for several days and out to about a week. This is the same data but now just shown in terms of response rates. This is proportion of, of patients that were at least 50% better and what you can see at day one, again, is that about a 64% response rate uh, to ketamine compared to less than 30% for the control. Again, less than out through day three, and then no longer significant by day seven. You know, this is a very uh, modest, um, a, a small um, a test of a, a large issue, which is new treatments for uh, refractory depression. This is simply a single injection. We wanted to test the, the very specific hypothesis, but future research will, before we can consider ketamine for any kind of treatment, we'll have to move into the realm of longer term safety and efficacy. We don't know anything about the effectiveness or safety of ketamine out past much past a, a day or, or a few weeks at most, and we're very interested in unpacking further the biological underpinnings of how this might be working to point the way towards uh, new treatments. This is very much of a, a proof of principle, right? We've, we've never, as far as we know, ever had a medication which exerted a rapid antidepressant effect. So one of the things about ketamine is to basically say to us in the field and to patients and to potential entities like pharmaceutical companies that might be thinking about investing in this kind of thing, is a rapid antidepressant effect possible? So I think that's the first thing. The question about ketamine as a treatment, whether it's safe, uh, whether it should be given long term, I think the data is not in. Um, ketamine is a drug of abuse. We think that the amounts in terms of sort of amount used per session, that some of this data is out there. Um, people that are abusing ketamine are using grams worth, thousands and thousands of milligrams at a time, many times a week for years. And in those patients we see cognitive problems, um, um, even sort of schizoid type uh, dissociative effects, and th these data are out there in the literature. We think we're, we're tens and maybe hundreds of times lower in the dose, but when you start thinking about treating a chronic illness, is this something that you give ketamine infusions days, weeks, months, years? Certainly not at this point. So I think it's, it's, it's important to have a cautionary tone about it. Uh, on the other hand, this is a FDA-approved medication that's been used in hundreds of thousands of patients all over the world for more than 50 years. It's exceedingly safe. Um, when used in uh, small amounts over short terms under close medical supervision.